because he's using <coughs> Latin. He's using Latin to explain why Hannibal Whoa. got into Rome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wow, that jockey was annoying. It pushed me right into the fire. Yeah. There are there's like there's a thing in um, in comedy in Britain which is called cracking America. It's when it's when a British comedian tries to do their same act in the United States. Mm. Eddie Azad has managed to crack crack America, and there are a couple who have tried and failed. Yeah. But, I mean, there are. I don't know if it's because of the British sense of humour, and you know to put inverted commas around that. Yeah. Or, I, or if it's. I think that's what most Americans blame is like I don't know like <laughs> if like there's like a British TV show or like British comedy thing. And people don't find it funny. They're like, oh, I guess that's just British humor or whatever. Nah. But I don't know. Or it just might be the case of they don't get the joke mm -hmm. and they th and they blame it on British humor. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I mean, I don't know. We like to think that we know everything, but in reality, we really don't. I mean, I don't know if there's any panel shows in, there's like comedy panel shows in, um, in America. Uh, I know there used to be, I don't know, there might be some still on her. I don't know. But, um, in Britain we have a, we have a comedy panel show called Mock the Week. Which basically is six panelists and the host taking the crap out of the news. <laughs> hmm. I haven't seen any new ones recently, and but and you can there is a channel where you can actually watch the um, the repeats of it. Oh yeah. And they're still really really fun. They're <laughs> still really they're still really really funny. Oh wow! I did not know you were down over here. Right. <laughs> I'm normally better at this, <laughs> but I'm talking so it's yeah. Totally I'm not exactly doing my best either. And they, what, they do, what they do is basically they they take the crap out of, new, out of the news and you know in certain situations. So for example, there's a there's one where they have to guess the um, where they have to get they have to guess the headline of a newspaper, mm -hmm. and it's like and it's like and it'll be a picture of you know to take something of to take something which has happened recently of. It was like the royal newlyweds, for example. There'd be a yeah. picture of them and the, the an anagram of the headline they're supposed to find out. And they'll just and to start off, they'll just take the crap out of it. So, hmm. say for example, is uh, uh, the the um, the actual headline might have been it's like royal wedding a success. So R Y A S. <laughs> and they'll just uh, they will take those letters and they will just run with it for about five minutes <laughs> <laughs> making absolutely hu humorous stuff you know it's about so it's like there'll be one that says like royal uh, royals went away for holidays or something like that and it makes it <laughs> really really funny and then there's the standard oh yeah we'll just tell it's like well standard um, we'll give you a topic and you do stand up for two or three minutes and then yeah. compare how you did with another person. Ah. And then it all yeah. ends up with them getting a certain situation like um, things you wouldn't hear things you wouldn't hear in a, in a, so, in a music industry song. Mm -hmm. And they will just run with that for a bit until like until they get to the next topic and it's absolutely hilarious at some points. You know, for example, they could get um, what a royal what a royal commentator wouldn't say. <laughs> that means they can they can run with it as far as they can. Oh, yeah. But there are you know limitations of how far they can go because you know there's you know they can't say this because oh that might it it might get people upset and then they'll get sued. Yeah. But when it comes to other actual stand up when they're not on the the show, they can go basically nearly as far as they want <laughs> and then and then then some if they want Zoe, I know you're mad at me. 
I'm not ready to give up on everything yet. Let's just kill Zoe now. <laughs> Multi women are not allowed on this tour. <laughs> no scope. Watch out! I I myself oh. haven't seen any um, stand up on a stand up live. I have a few DVDs of it though. Oh yeah. And it doesn't give you the same feeling as being there, but it's still quite funny to see them where they can, where they have very few restrictions. Yeah, where they don't have to watch what they say or yeah. care about. Don't have that car that's something. alarmed. <laughs> But then again, there are other forms of comedy other than stand-up, which I yeah. found out actually maybe about three or four years ago from my dad, and he got me into musical comedy, actually. Whoa. What's that? Like, what do you mean by musical comedy? It would be like a stage show on, on Broadway or something. Yeah. It's basically very, very humorous. So, for example, to take one that I know very well and I've actually seen myself, uh, Spam a lot, which is basically the musical version of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, I, I saw that about five years ago, I think. I've actually it's seen pretty it. good. Spam a lot is the stage show of it, yeah. where they take certain aspects of it and you know they stretch it out so it can actually fit into a whole show. Yeah. And it's all it's like all singing and all dancing and really it's. After you have to have a certain bit of comedy in mm -hmm. aspect to it, and you have to have that in your head as well to understand it. But if you have it, and you you will laugh out loud yeah. if you've seen it. I've also seen um, a, 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 I don't know what they call it a play at a show, but it's called the producers. And that oh yeah, I've heard just, about that. And that basically is what my dad got me watching on um, watching. Uh, comedy like that. Mm, nice. Dark. And that was, and that was, that was like pretty deep stuff as well. That was basically, you know, um, that all. What it's basically about is a, uh, is two producers try and go on the biggest scam, the a scam in the world, mm. where they take a, take a play which is what they think is near guaranteed to fail huh. and they um, and they run with it try and get so they hire the worst directors the worst actors <laughs> and and it actually turns out good <laughs> so the two million that they've raised to run away to Rio de Janeiro with they actually have to pay back <laughs> but they can't because they've swindled it. And it ends up with one of them gets caught and the other one gets to go to Rio de Janeiro in which, you know, then it's like the inevitable return and they realize that hey, we don't actually have if we work together we can't we don't actually have to swindle money yeah. swindle money. We actually can just, you know, create really good really good plays and, and have people enjoy themselves to pay right. money. I have no idea where to go. It's over here, where the witch is. <laughs> Do you have a shotgun? <laughs> uh, no I don't. Oh well. Time to shoot. Oh, and I would start of the witch. <laughs> 